Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on MovieHouseMemories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. Four boys are back, or at least most of us, or some of us, for another review of one of our Criterion Film Library movies. I'm Patrick. I'm Chris. And Chris is filling in for Bobby and Shane this week as we review uh, a film that Chris wanted to review, number 428 on the Criterion release schedule, Drunken Angel from 1948, a Kira Kurosawa film. And uh, before we get into our review of cr- the Criterion disc released today as well was the Noirsville episode of Drunken Angel where Chris and I reviewed the actual film of Drunken Angel. So why are you here first? You need to go back and listen to that podcast. Then come back here and you can hear us talk about the disc. On this episode, we uh, are hoping that we'll be able to pronounce people's names better than the Noirsville episode. Yeah. Tough names like Donald Ritchie. Uh, but, but <laughs> all right. But usually we start off by talking about the films that were just released uh, in on crit or on criterion. Uh, we're going to do that later this month in the night of the hunter podcast with Bobby and Shane. Uh, we typically do it at the end of the month after all the films have come out. And uh, this is an additional bonus episode. Uh, We did one last month with Chris when he wanted to review Cat People. And we're going to do another one next month when we're going to review the film Blast of Silence. Bobby's going to join us on that one. Uh, So we're going to skip the review of the upcoming Criterion Films. But let's talk about what we... we, One thing I always enjoy talking about is uh, what would we like to see be released on Criterion, what what would we like to see the get the Criterion treatment and come out? Uh, and Chris, you don't get to come on that often, so uh, you've got to have a long list of films you'd like to see get uh, the extra bonus treatment. Well, you know, I was I was mentioning to you before we started that Shout Factory uh, uh, releases stuff, and so some of the films that uh, I would like to see they have already. They've already done, but um, you know, it, it's kind of silly. But as I as I've told you before, Idiocracy is one of my all time favorite films. I think at this point, it's more of a documentary than a, a fiction film. And I would kind of like to see some sort of criterion where they get interviews with uh, with the people in the film and and do a criterion version of it. I, I know that a lot of people say that's just too stupid for criterion, but I think that film has a lot of relevance and it's a very significant film. You know, and it, it's it's not a film. It's I've seen pieces of it, never seen it in its entirety, but I I. I do agree with the people who have seen it and like it. Uh, they are, they do agree that it, it has more significance as time goes on. So it might be one of those films that becomes a cult classic in a retrospect based off just the changing political culture. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe even a, um, a shout out to the monkey's head. Can we get that on Criterion 1968? <laughs> I don't know if I ever want to see that one again. That one's a hard <laughs> one. That's a hard watch. That, And I love the monkeys, and that one was just very, very difficult to watch. No, it wasn't good. It's like, um, what was the Kids in the Hall movie, Brain Candy or Brain something candy, like that? Yeah. I don't know why you get these funny sketch shows to make a movie, and then it sucks. Only Monty Python's really been able to pull it off well. Yeah, and they pull, pulled it off only about half the time. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll agree with you on that. All right. Uh, my pick, it's, I'm not going to go with it, something funny, but it was it's just something that I'd seen on my shelf I hadn't watched for a while. Uh, coming out of the late 90s is Rounders with uh, Matt Damon, uh, Edward Norton, mm-hmm. and uh, John Malkovich. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, Famke Johnson. There's actually a lot of people. As, as I start rolling no. through the coast, there's a, that, that's got an, an incredibly stellar cast. 
How but, could we haven't reviewed that film? That would be a good one to review. I, I really, shows. I really, I don't know, wouldn't put it in my top 100, but I really love that film. I loved it when it first came out. Um, I do think John Malkovich chews a lot of scenery in it, but that's what John Malkovich does anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it's just a really incredibly uh, entertaining film. I know a couple of years ago, I remember reading that they potentially were trying to develop a sequel to it. And I thought it was interesting that you'd come back to it 20 years later. But it, it's something with the cast that they had. I would love to see a little bit more background on how they were able to pull that together, because especially in its time, uh, Malkovich was at the height of his power. You know, Matt Damon is, you know, was he was still somewhat of an up and comer, but he's the lead. Edward Norton was coming straight out of American History X. I mean, everybody in that film was somebody and it, it was it, how do you pull them together for that film i think would be an interesting story in itself so i'd love to see some additional extras on that film i'm sure edward norton's good for some intense stories no oh, he's always interested uh, good for some intense stories yeah <laughs> all right well uh let's start with our review of the drunken angel criterion and chris you uh actually texted me and said let's review drunken angel i just watched it and mm-hmm. what what about this film uh yeah i know we just discussed it over on noirsville about the film itself but why did you say hey let's review this for criterion well you know i didn't know that this uh i had known about this film for quite some time and it's a noir we, most kurosawa films are set in uh, a feudal japan setting and this one is post world war ii uh, straight up a noir and um, something that I had not seen a, a setting for any of Kurosawa's films. And I figured that uh, you would enjoy something like that, too, especially when you said you had not seen this one. No, I hadn't. And I didn't even know that it existed on Criterion. Not that it, you know, with a, almost or over a thousand movies now, it's getting dip, more difficult to you know, sort through and figure out which ones are out. But I had never seen it. I'd heard of it. Uh, but I had actually never seen it. I'd never actually even seen it someplace where I could watch it. So I actually had to, once, once you suggested it, I had to actually track down a copy, which is still available only on DVD, not on Blu-ray yet. Um, you can track it down on Amazon for about 27, 28 bucks, depending on the day and the week. But it, it and you can find it on our website. Uh, I have a link to the Amazon page. Oh, good plug there, Chris. So, <laughs> but it's, it uh, didn't mean for that, but just coincidentally. <laughs> so, and while you're there, you should pick up some turtle wax. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, you know, it was, it, it was, it, you know, I love Kurosawa films and much like you, I'm, I'm more familiar with some of these more popular or better known films, which as you said, take place usually in feudal Japan, very samurai driven. And I, you know, three of those films I've already put in my top 100 in, on uh, the Movie House Memories podcast, Rashomon, Seven Samurai, and uh, Yohimbo. And uh, I, uh, those are films I feel very passionate about. So to hear about a film that I hadn't seen, and especially with your recommendation, I was like, okay, well, I'm good. I'm good to go. I'll just go out and buy a copy and got it and watched it and really enjoyed it. I, I was very surprised with it. But uh, let's get into the review of the Criterion. We typically start by talking about on the art on the cover. Uh, I have the DVD. The cover is pretty basic, uh, half black, half white, right side being white, kind of a smear of white paint, which goes with the theme of what a uh, scene in the film where there's a uh, fight to the death in a hallway where some white paint is uh, spread on the floor. There's a body of a gangster like character in the upper right hand corner and it just says simply uh akira kurosawa's drunken angel chris uh uh, that's my copy i don't believe you own a copy because you have another way to watch criterion right i this is on the criterion channel as um it's been on for about two or three months now and as of this recording it's still there and um same cover uh, on the, on the channel as you just described, and uh, but it, it's sounding to me like there's not as many features on the channel as what the discs the disc has, and this is just uh, it's either streaming or DVD, correct? There is not a Blu-ray version that I've been able to see. No, there is no Blu-ray version of this film at this time, okay. or at okay. least up to when we recorded this. 
Uh, so, Chris, I think believe this is the first time that we reviewed something that you watched on the Criterion channel. And, you know, we've this the Criterion mm -hmm. critics, we've talked about the discs that we buy. And I know primarily, well, I know that uh, uh, Bobby and I pretty much get discs and Shane has no option but to get discs because Criterion channel is not available in Australia right now. So this is going to be a good, ex you know, experience to see what is different. Do you get more? Do you get the same things on the Criterion channel or do you get a little bit less? Or are they uh, exactly the same? And if you're going to spend, you know, 20 bucks a month buying a Criterion, might as well get the channel at the same time. Well, I would I would say you would want to invest in the disc uh, added to your collection. Now, um, this one did not have um, – there is a, a making of where it basically talks about uh, the Kurosawa and the sensors. And then there's a 30-minute – actual making of how they did it correct on the disc correct on criterion uh there was only the 25 minute kurosawa and sensors portion i would have liked to have seen the 30 minute documentary on it as well but at this time there was only the the 25 minute video piece all right well let's talk about the conversion quality now i watched it on dvd you watched it on television mm-hmm the, at least the DVD, I was very impressed with the conversion quality. It's a 1948 film. Uh, I and I completely anticipated that it possibly might be a little grainy, even though I know Criterion does a lot of restoration. Um, this is not as popular as Seven Samurai, and I would, I would have thought that the, them going back and finding uh, workable prints that they could clean up and, uh, and convert over to DVD would have been a little bit more difficult, but I was pretty impressed with it. There's, there was, a, I watched once again, watch it on the big screen television. There's a crispness to the image. Uh, the sound was not, I would say stellar, but it's a 1948 film. I didn't expect to have, uh, the absolute best sound, uh, that you can get, but it was, I, I could hear what was going on. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible. Uh, it was not distorted, but, uh, I, I thought the conversion was pretty good. What did you think? Yeah, my version was excellent as well. Um, looked beautiful. I will agree the sound, uh, not as, uh, not as much to work with there, but visually, uh, it was great. It was beautiful. And you could, uh, it, you know, this is a dark film in general, but everything looked just great, even in the darker scenes. Yep. All right. Well, let's talk about the what we primarily come here to talk about, the extras on the disc. And Chris has already hinted at what he was able to see from the Criterion channel. Uh, the mm -hmm. DVD disc itself had uh, the newly restored high-definition digital transfer that we, we just talked about. Uh, the audio commentary featuring uh, a Japanese film scholar, Donald Ricci. Uh, talking about the making of the film, a 31-minute documentary on the making of Drunken Angel, uh, created as part of the Toho Masterworks series, Akira Kurosawa. It's a it is wonderful to create. Uh, so it was not created for the Criterion. It was actually part of something else. The documentary Chris has already referenced that he was able to see the Kurosawa and the censors, a new 25-minute video piece that looked at the challenges Kurosawa faced in making Drunken Angel, which was made for the Criterion, uh, a new and improved uh, English subtitle translation, which uh, I didn't see that is significant, and a booklet featuring an essay by a cultural historian Ian Barama, and excerpts from Kurosawa was something like an autobiography, uh, which discussed both uh, Drunken Angel, uh, the writing the screenplay, the filming the movie, as well as uh, his relationship and uh, find in the the uh, discovering, if you will, of Mifune. Chris, so of those things, it sounds like the only one you had was the 25 minute video piece. Yeah, that's that's the only one that I had. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even be able to tell you on the English translation. You know, it was it was perfectly fine to me. And um, I'm still debating. I can tell you I didn't listen for audio commentary from Donald Ritchie, but I do think that uh, that was on there and I missed it. All right. So the, the, I was going to ask you, was the commentary on there? Was that something that they make available on the Criterion channel? Because I don't have that yet. Because I, I, it will frustrate the living hell out of me f if it's a film that I want to see all the extras and they have one or two. And you're already telling me now that they're missing an extra on this. 
but did they, you, you believe the commentary was on there? Well, I'm going to say this, that I don't see audio commentary, um, and it is just the two videos, the main movie and the 30-minute um, or the 25-minute making of, uh, or I should say, Kurosawa and the censors. So no commentary? No. All not right. that I see. Disappointing. Extremely disappointing. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that leads us to the first question. What extras are missing? And Chris, I'm assuming all the extras that other extras that were on the disc are missing for you. Uh, but in addition to those, is there something else that you would like to have seen? You know, honestly, um, because this was, I'm sure this is asking a lot. Since they talked about uh, the the U.S. censors, I kind of would have liked to have seen somebody from the U.S. military side talk about their thoughts on it, or uh, maybe even some um, some other big name directors um, who who can take some time from talking shit about Marvel films and let us know what they think of Kurosawa's film. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, I didn't really care for the Kurosawa and the censors uh, documentary, uh, of that I would like to have seen more about the film and distinctly, uh, I, you know, I, this is something I think is lacking in most of, at least of the criterions I've seen so far of Kurosawa and his re- relationship with his two, you know, well, best well known actors is I, you know, I'd love to see more of a documentary about those uh, those relationships uh, with uh, both uh, Mifune and um, Shimura, you know. And I would like a little bit more on that, especially in the fact that this is the this is the dawn of the Kurosawa and Mifune era. I mean, this is the first film where they worked together, and I think that was. Although it's mentioned, uh, it's you know s- slightly highlight- highlighted. It's kind of th- thrown out there in passing and this moving on, which ironically I think the best description of it comes in the uh, s- the uh, uh, excerpt from Kurosawa's autobiography uh, that where he actually talks about the. Uh, kind of the discovery of Mufune and how he came to his attention. And I thought that was more of uh, more information and more interesting than most of the other things on there. So that's, that's what I thought was uh, exceptionally lacking on this disc. Do you know what kind of relationship those two guys had? Is it something like a John uh, Ford, John Wayne sort of relationship, almost like a mentor sort of thing, but it could be very volatile or do you know anything about there? I believe it was very volatile and ultimately uh, ended in poorly uh, later in life where they mm-hmm. just didn't ended up not working together uh, after that. But I, I, can, I can only imagine Mifune just – just by his, everything I've ever seen of him on film is being a very volatile person. <laughs> he just seems strikes mm-hmm. me that way. Very, very passionate in what he believes where I think Kurosawa always strikes me as very, very, uh, very strong, but very quiet De- definitely knowing who he is, uh, which is ironic when you look at his autobiography and you know, how he describes himself as a very strong, but he is, it's a, it's a false strength there to cover weakness. Um, Mm -hmm. So uh, he had a lot, apparently had a lot of insight into himself. What about the quality and quantity of the extras? Apparently for you, Chris, that they're very, very much lacking on the criterion channel. Yeah, but I'll say this criterion channel is still pretty new. So maybe they're still adding stuff. Um, I know they rotate stuff a lot, Uh, but you know, for what I got, the the quality was good. I thought, um, uh, of course, I would like to have seen the extras that you saw, but you know, for what they gave, it was fine. I, as I said, I always I did feel that there was something that was lacking here. What they had was good. It was a it was a start. Uh, at least there was a new piece uh, describing uh, Kurosawa and the censors. Uh, the thirty one minute documentary was just a small portion of a much larger documentary, and they just took out the portion that was relevant to this film. Uh, I almost feel like they should have included the entire thing, um, but that runs the risk of the extras becoming about Kurosawa and not so much about Drunken Angel, which sometimes can be a frustration for me. The audio commentary was pretty good. Uh, it's It was a one-person doc, uh, commentary, so that can get a little dry at certain points, um, but 
he did provide Donald Ritchie. Ritchie did provide enough uh, interesting information about the making of the film and stories about the making of the film that uh, it didn't it it didn't completely put you know, want to put me to sleep. So that that was a a good thing. The booklet. Uh, I'm usually not a fan of the booklet, but this was the best booklet. I uh, of all the films we've reviewed on Criterion, this was the best booklet. The essay by historian uh, Burama was very interesting. Uh, I thought it was very insightful uh, to the, about the film and was uh, s- something I really enjoyed reading. Usually I think it's just uh, most of the booklets are uh, usually some film historian or film critic who just wants to pontificate and talk about uh, themselves and how the film affected them or something along those lines. This was very much about the film. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the excerpts from Kurosawa's autobiography, just these excerpts has caused me to want to read that autobiography. I think it's an excellent, uh, it was really, really interesting and gave you some insight about the film and his approach to it, uh, his relationship with the screenwriter and their struggles with trying to make the story work for a long period of time and then how they finally came to a breakthrough. And I, I, I think it was all a, a really, really good add to this film and uh, probably should have been uh, covered more in some sort of the making of if if I if I had had my way. I guess the the next question we usually ask is what is our favorite extra from the Criterion? And Chris, you only saw one. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think that based on what you've mentioned in it, that that, that probably would have intrigued me the most because I do find uh, how um, he got censored and how he found ways to work around what he wanted to still say and have what I consider a pretty darn good story left over. You know, uh, we've reviewed some films on Noirsville, uh, most recently The Blue Dahlia, where the censors said, no, we don't want you to do that. And they ruined what I consider a really good movie with what Raymond Chandler wanted to say. And this was, once again, the U.S. military saying, please don't do that very forcefully. So I think that uh, Kira Kurosawa uh, was able to navigate those waters very well and come up with a great film. You know, uh, this is going to be a rarity for me. I'm going to say my favorite extra was the booklet um, Mm -hmm. with the essay and the excerpts. I I found that really, really fascinating and probably the thing I enjoyed most of all the extras. I didn't care for the censor one. Not that it was a nice add on, but it wasn't the thing that drew my attention. You know, as much as I do like to hear how, uh, you know, directors worked around censors in the day, especially with in American films with uh, strict um, morality codes and things like that. Uh, this one didn't, I didn't find that overwhelmingly interesting uh, or insightful, but the booklet was really, really good. And uh, as I said, it caused me to want to fi- locate and find the biography for Kurosawa so that I could uh, actually read the thing, read the thing in its entirety. Cause I would love to read more about his films, especially being such a big fan of Kurosawa as I am. Do you know what that autobiography is called? Is it just simply an autobiography or uh, I want to say it's something like an autobiography. Cause I well, looked it up at one I've point. I've got it up on my iPad. There is something called something like an autobiography by Akira Kurosawa. That's like 75 bucks. Yeah. That's what I said. That's the, what I've seen. So very basic white with letters. So that that's now I'm seeing one for 1440. Mm. Guess what I'll be ordering tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, going into our final question, is the film worthy of a Criterion edition and do we recommend picking it up? Chris, you want to review it? What do you think? Oh, I, I recommend anybody pick it up that likes both noir and uh, Kurosawa films. This is an excellent addition to anybody's collection. And even though I saw it on the Criterion channel, I very well might just go pick it up myself so I can have it in my own personal one. All right. Uh, I, too, would recommend picking it up. I actually did pick it up myself to actually watch it. Not a sight unseen, never seen the film in itself. Uh, I will say it's a little light as far as a Criterion edition. It's nowhere near Spartacus levels, which appear to be our our threshold for the extreme version of Criterion. That was, what, 45 hours of Oh, my God. Uh, So many commentaries, so many musical tracks. I want to say that that was like 
21, 22 hours of stuff. I mean, there was a lot of stuff on that. Uh, but this is, I mean, it's a fairly short film. It's only about an hour and a half long. Um, then you have the commentary. You you have a total of only about a, an hour's worth of extras on there. So it's light for a criterion, but it's not completely sparse. And the information is on there is primarily focused on the film itself. Uh, at, although I've complained about, you know, this time about wishing to have more about Kurosawa and his actors, um, the, that this has something there. So I do think it's worth the investment. Um, I would like to see it come out on Blu-ray. I'd like to see it, uh, it, the quality of it improve, but uh, we'll see if that ever happens. So I would recommend picking it up, and especially if you, you know, at only about 27 28 bucks it's fairly cheap considering uh the criterions typically on blu-ray go for about 40 bucks i feel like i've picked some criterions with some very uh, limited um extras you did <laughs> yeah you did. because we have one called blast of silence coming up next month and i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly it's limited as well yes it, it it has a it's a 70 minute film and i think there's an hour documentary and some still photographs and a trailer if i remember mm-hmm. correctly and a booklet there is a book and a booklet a little so, essay but that but that was that was it so but let's shh, we're not reviewing that till next month okay <laughs> all right well that does it for uh this m- week's review of drunken angel Thanks again for joining us and listening to our little, usually monthly podcast, but for the last couple of months of this year, it's a bi-weekly podcast. If you've had a good time, the fun just have to stop here. You can follow us on Facebook at Movie House Memories or on Twitter at MH Memories on either Facebook or Twitter. You can keep up on our written film reviews and film summaries, news on upcoming films and Blu-ray releases, and information on upcoming podcasts on the MHN Podcast Network. And you can also now subscribe to our account on YouTube, where we're now releasing our podcast day and date with a release on iTunes and Stitcher, as well as, oh my gosh, Chris, where else can they find us now? iHeartRadio. Spotify. Spotify. We're everywhere. We're like weeds. We just keep growing all over the place. And nobody wants them. (laughs) Hopefully not. Uh, And if you've enjoyed yourselves and you've downloaded us, Download us off any of those platforms. Make sure to rate our pa- podcast on any one of those two, uh, those platforms. And if you have a chance, write a short review of the podcast. Of course, we always like the reviews that are positive, but we appreciate any feedback that we can get from any listeners of the show. Well, that does it for this episode of Criterion Critics. Join us in a couple of weeks when we come back for Bobby's next pick for a Criterion review, and we review 1955's The Night of the Hunter, uh, the podcast that we promised you a couple weeks ago before we decided to do another one in the middle of that until then i'm patrick i'm chris and we'll see you all next time at our house podcast is not endorsed by the Criterion Collection and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The theme music for Criterion Critics, Miami Nights' main theme, is provided courtesy of Kevin McLeod at Incomputech.com under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the MHN Podcast Network, Criterion Critics, and the Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment LLC unless otherwise noted.